Hello everyone. I gotta say, I've been in a real testy kind of mood lately. And by testy, I mean I've been testing out a lot of the stuff that machinists take for granted. Today, I'm gonna be testing out how repeatable quick change tool posts are. Let me talk about my setup. As you can see, I have a magnetic dial indicator base back here. My dial indicator is sitting on the top of this tool. I'm not actually looking at center height with this. I'm just looking at repeatability for the location. I want to make sure that every time I drop this tool holder on and tighten up the cam on this tool post, that it's landing in the realm of zero. Here's how I'm going to do this test. I have my compound angled just like I would for threading because I'm about to do that in another video. Stay tuned for that one. And what I'm going to do is lift the plunger of the indicator off as gently as I possibly can, just so that I don't move this really floppy setup. And then I'm going to retract the compound so that I can get the tool out of the way of the indicator. Now I'm going to take this completely off of the tool post and then drop it back down on tighten it up and run it back in and see how close to zero I am. And right there, I'm right on the money. Let me zoom in a little bit closer to the indicator setup so you can see that. So you just saw my first test and I'm gonna do this a total of 10 times. So I've got nine more to go. I have made sure that all of the surfaces of the dovetails are nice and clean, as well as the top of the tool post. I don't want to introduce any possible errors that way. All right, and we're right back on zero, maybe a smidge higher, maybe a tenth or two. This is a thousandths indicator, by the way. All right, here's attempt number three. That looks pretty nice. That looks good too. I should take a little bit of time to talk about the different types of tool posts here. This is an Alorus type and specifically the wedge type tool post. What that means is when I tighten the cam, this wedge, which is tapered in this direction here, comes down and makes this dovetail wider to tighten against the tool holder. That actually has the effect of drawing down our adjusting nut down against the top of the tool post. So this type is widely regarded as being very repeatable. They also have a piston type that has a solid dovetail and just a piston right here. So when you tighten up this cam, it just pushes the piston out. That has the effect of pushing the tool holder out against the dovetails, but it doesn't draw it downwards against the top of the tool post. I've never actually used one of the piston style, so I can't really talk about its accuracy, but from all accounts, it's not as repeatable as the wedge style. There are a lot of other types of tool posts out there as well. There's the really popular multi-fix one, which has a multi-position uh, turret up here. I've never used one of those either, although I'd love to if, um, if I ever come across one for the right price. Uh, we have the Dixon style on the lathes over at Parkland College where I teach. Uh, that one looks like it has two triangular ways and a cam draws it into those ways. Again, that one is just drawing the tool holder inwards towards the tool post. It doesn't necessarily draw it down. And then there's one that's really common that actually came on this lathe. It's called a four position turret. And it's just a square tool post with four equal slots on the sides. Those have no height adjustment whatsoever. So the only way to adjust your height is to put shims under the tool to get it on center height. They are a royal pain in the butt. If you have one of those, I highly recommend upgrading to some type of quick change tool post as soon as you possibly can. There's also the rocker style tool posts. 
but those aren't nearly as common as they used to be. Uh, there's zero repeatability. Those are the ones that look like a cylinder with a slot cut through the middle, and a lot of times there's a half moon shaped rocker down at the bottom which gives it its name. Uh, every time you loosen that tool post you lose your center height, so there's no repeatability whatsoever. Let's get back to the testing. This I believe is attempt number five, or at least it is now. Beautiful, that's looking good. Here's attempt number six, that one's a little lower, maybe three or four tenths. Here's number seven. Right on zero. Here comes attempt number eight. Right on zero, maybe a tenth low. Just guesstimating on that. Like I said, this is a thousandths indicator, and you can pretty easily divide that, uh, that space up between marks with your eye. Here's number nine. A smidge low, maybe two tenths. Yeah, about two tenths low. I want to address a few potential possibilities for error. I've tried my best to eliminate chips from this experiment, but in practice they can be a real problem. If you get chips in between the top of the tool post and the adjusting knob, obviously that's going to change your center height. I don't think the tension on the cam has much to do with this. You can see it raises a little bit when I loosen it, but it pulls right back down and it's right where it had been. I can try to torque it down and it doesn't really seem to make in a, any difference whatsoever besides a little bit of flex while I'm doing it. I think the biggest source for deviation here in my test is actually this magnetic base indicator holder. You can see I can lightly push on this pretty much anywhere including moving the indicator around so it's very easy to bump this and get a different reading and that could easily be happening while I'm pulling up on the plunger. I'm trying to do it as gently as I possibly can but I'm human and uh, you know I like to think anyway that I'm stronger than I am. This ability to bump around your indicator holder is a really common source of error with any kind of indicating job, so it's something that you should definitely be aware of, especially if you're using an indicator with a much finer graduation than this. I hope you found this video at least marginally helpful. If you did, or if you can think of a way I could have done it better, let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit that like and subscribe button. If you're interested in supporting the channel further, check out my Patreon page. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.